Hi everybody. Confession. I started last night around midnight after doing some research and taking some notes. And after about five attempts, getting me to 1 a.m., I realized this just wasn't going to work. So my recall is not going to be what it might have been last night, although at midnight to 1 a.m., how great could it have been? And I'm going to have to be looking up and down at my notepad, and I apologize about that, but I don't want to misstate things. Basically, I am just regurgitating information from some videos and some articles, but in my own way. So I'm going to try to make sure you know where I'm getting the information. It's just sometimes we can receive what we need to hear from one person and not another. And it seemed worthwhile for me to, you know, kind of pack a few things together in this video. It may be long. So if you haven't gone potty, you might want to do that now or just pause, of course. That's always an option. Or grab a cup of coffee, hot chocolate, glass of wine, whatever, and settle in. Totally up to you, of course. So... A couple days ago, on my homepage on YouTube, there was a video, and Spirit tends to plop these things down in front of me when I need to click on them. It wouldn't have been anything I would have gone searching for, but there it was, and the title was intriguing, so I clicked. <sighs> wow, what an eye-opener. Before I let the cat out of the bag, though, I want to run by you a few traits so that you can kind of see if this is going to apply to you or not. So the first one is having people-pleasing tendencies. The second trait is that you can't seem to shake self-doubt. You're always second-guessing yourself, and that's no matter whether you've been working like crazy on it. You still doubt yourself. The third one is that you seem to have some issues with being successful or being in the spotlight. It just doesn't feel comfortable, or you may want it really bad, but it's not happening, and you can't figure out why it's not. The fourth one is you tend to attract the same kind of friends or love interests over and over again. And I'm talking ones that you realize eventually are not that good for you. And yet, even though you realize this one didn't treat you well, the next one seems to also not treat you well, and it's a pattern. Why? Why? Why always the same kind of person am I choosing to bring into my life? And the last one is that basically you just feel like you're not as good as everyone else. Maybe you acknowledge that you feel like there's something really wrong with you, that you're defective. Um... You often feel just different from other people. And when situations get challenging, you feel helpless. Like you can't do anything about it. Like this is just your lot in life. Now, if those in large part resonate with you, let me tell you where these came from. This was from a Psych Central article about common struggles faced by children of narcissists. There's the angle that made me click on the video. You know, I had no clue when she was alive and it took me a long time after she died to finally figure out that my mom was a narcissist. 
a damn good one, actually. I mean, really good. And I started listening to the things that came up in this video and one after another explained why I have been acting a certain way in my life, feeling a certain way, just really eye-opening. And that's what I wanted to share with you because you may not realize either. You may not have made that connection that your parent is a narcissist. Now, I don't want to forget to say two things. First of all, narcissists are not born that way. They have very deep core wounds, often from being abused, that bring this disorder about. They may or may not know what they're doing. Often they do, but don't see a way to change it. It's not like the baby comes out of the chute, woohoo, I'm a narcissist. They're coming from their wounds. It doesn't excuse the behavior, but it does maybe help a child to admit that their parent is a narcissist because it's a hard thing to realize that the way you are feeling life is defeating you actually came from actions of your parent that you love. And you know, I do understand that. You still love them, even though they have torn down your self-esteem and made you feel like you never could be good enough. That's just how it is. We love our parents, even when they don't deserve it, maybe. So if those traits ring a bell with you about yourself, I'm going to amplify on them a bit and then go to recapping what was discussed in the video that brought me to this subject. I'm sorry about the crinkly paper. You know, I hate to take handwritten notes, but I just didn't have my computer and I knuckled down even though I don't know why I have a problem with writing by hand. I just don't like it anymore. So the first one, if you have people pleasing tendencies, this may explain why. You likely experienced rage attacks and very unpredictable behavior from your narcissistic parent when you unwittingly questioned their authority or their superiority. Those are both things very important to the narcissist. And so you learned how to rationalize those kinds of attacks. And you also learned how to avoid conflict because it wasn't pretty when they happened to you as a child. You took it on. It became habit. That's how conditioning is. We don't realize how it is we came to be this way. The second one is that no matter how much you work at it, you can't seem to quit doubting yourself. You're always second guessing yourself, your reactions, your emotions. And you've kind of learned how to shut off your inner voice, your intuition, not trust your own instincts because of usually gaslighting, total denial by a parent when you ask, why did you blah, 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 and the parent says, who, me? You're imagining it. You may have guilt or fear about succeeding, fear of being in the spotlight, or you may really want that, but you can't figure out why it's just not happening. Well, you were made to feel like you never could be good enough. So it isn't a natural extension for you to see yourself as successful because after all, you fall short of the mark. How could you possibly be successful? 
and you've gotten very good at sabotaging yourself, although you probably don't recognize it as that. You're always striving for perfection. Of course, we know there's no such thing as perfection, but you got to try. And because you never see yourself as reaching that level, and that's the only acceptable level to you, you never think that you really deserve the success or the attention you get when you are in the spotlight is very likely that you were put down and belittled any time you let your little kid self shine. You know, if you were getting the attention, you were taking it away from your parent that's the narcissist. Bad thing. The parent was probably jealous and they had to do whatever it took to knock you down and make you dim your light. Well, if you're used to dimming your light and making less of yourself and your achievements, you don't want it in the spotlight. You don't want people to see that you're not good enough and you don't deserve to be there. Is this making sense? You know, basically, when we're children, we just do our thing. We don't judge ourselves. We just allow ourselves to be who we are. But if you were the child of a narcissist, when you let your beautiful little light shine and people gave you attention and said, oh, how adorable, or look how smart that kid is, or whatever it was, that provoked jealousy and sometimes rage in your parent. And you didn't want to have to face the consequences, so you just made yourself small again. You played right along. And I'm not saying you should blame yourself. It's just what we do. We want our parents' love. We adapt in the way that we have to that will get us that love in the way a child reasons anyway. Now, duplication in friends and love interests or partners. If you're raised by a narcissist, you got used to certain treatment, and it's very likely that you found yourself with partners or friends who would do the same things to you. It's your comfort zone. So you may have one partner after another who doesn't treat you well, who belittles you, who reinforces the idea that your parent planted in you that you're not good enough, you're not worthy, you're not lovable. It's a vicious cycle. We tend to stick with what we're familiar with. And we may not realize that our parent was a narcissist. We may not realize that our friends or partners are narcissists, but we're used to that behavior. It doesn't matter that it's so painful, that it makes us miserable. It's what we know. And someone that was totally outside of that mold probably wouldn't even catch our eye. Let me see what I'm missing here. Since your parent was emotionally unavailable, you fear emotional and maybe actual abandonment because basically they bailed on you by not giving you the love. And then you're so fearful of that happening in your relationships, friends or lovers, that you're afraid of becoming intimate and actually working toward a true connection because you're scared to death you're going to lose it. And so it's easier just to avoid that altogether. You know, it doesn't make sense necessarily because probably what we crave the most is what we're pushing away. But a lot of us will just totally avoid anything that smacks of having the potential to really be amazing 
because we're so afraid of losing it. And we see it because of flaws in us. Like, we're not good enough. They're going to see that eventually. They're going to abandon us, reject us. And it's because they will finally see who they're with. We don't see it as them having an issue. We always see it as us having an issue because that's how we were trained, I guess you could say. It was always on us because a narcissist doesn't take accountability. Hell no. And then lastly, feeling defective, worthless, helpless, and often feeling different than everybody else. Not understanding why, but often just feeling like we just don't belong anywhere. We often will have extremely vocal inner voices, but they aren't voices that say, oh my God, that was wonderful. Aren't you brave or aren't you smart? No, they're voices that say, oh, you could have done that better or what the hell is the matter with you? How could you have done such a stupid thing? So these very loud and vocal inner critics are full of negative self-talk, bringing up feelings of guilt, self-blame, self-hatred, and making us feel like anything short of perfection is not good enough. We also were taught that our needs didn't matter because after all, the narcissist has to be the star of the show or of the family. And so we even feel guilty that we have needs or desires, much less that we ask someone to meet them or fulfill them. So those are common traits. If they resonate with you, then maybe you should stick around for a little more of the video. I'm going to take a minute here and kind of flip through to figure out where I want to go next and I'll be right back. Okay, here we go again and this is going through a lot of the points that were made in the video that was on my homepage. It was titled, You're Not Crazy, It's Your Mother. And it came from a channel that's called New Mind Frame. New N-U Mind Frame, one word. Now, I had no idea that something like this existed, but there is this thing called narcissistic supply. A narcissist has to have their ego constantly fed. It doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. It's like that ego just needs to eat. So it could be like positive would be they get praise for something they've done or that their spouse or children have done, or it could be that their ego is fed by causing strong emotional reactions or pain in others. And they don't empathize. They don't feel that pain in any way themselves. Your pain gives them that food that their ego needs. You know, it, it's hard to wrap your mind around, but that's because your mind doesn't work the same way as the mind of your parent. You're never going to really understand it. You may have compassion when you realize that they had very deep wounds and felt shame and ended up with this disorder as a result. You may feel compassion because you can kind of see it must have been confusing to them sometimes when they looked back on the things they did and wondered why what would bother most people didn't bother them. I mean, chances are you feel a lot of compassion for other people, despite all this. All right, so signs that you were raised by a narcissist. Here we go. 
The narcissistic parent is very good about laying guilt trips on you. They will ask you to do something if you don't comply. If they get a no, not the yes they were expecting, you will probably hear about all they've done for you, all the ways they've sacrificed for you. After all, they've given up their own career to be a stay-at-home mother or, you know, I don't know. See, my mind can't go there because my mind just isn't made that way. It is intended to turn your no into a yes. It is intended to get them what they want. And so they will just let you know all the ways you've been a burden to them and how righteous they've been to have hung in there with you, you worthless child. Sorry. Their love is very conditional. You probably grew up knowing that if you failed at something, you certainly were going to hear about it, but it wasn't going to get you any attention. Most likely it got you the silent treatment. If you wanted attention from your narcissistic parent, by golly, you better do really well at something. So they'd have something to brag about to post on social media. Narcissists love to bask in the success of their children. And if you defy them, they will withhold love. It puts a lot of pressure on us. We think we have to earn their love by always doing better than anyone else, by giving them something to brag about. They're going to step in and make sure other people know that they are the parent of this brilliant child, young adult, adult, because they get off on it. The bragging about all the things you have done, all the talents you have, etc. If you are not at that level, if you have not pleased them, if they're talking about you, it's not going to be pretty. You're going to hear about how you've disappointed them. So it makes us grow up just wanting to keep everyone else happy, people pleasing, because we think we have to prove our worth, that we don't deserve love merely because we're on this earth. We think we have to earn it. So we work damn hard to get people to approve of us. And again, putting our own needs aside because we don't think our needs matter. I guess that often narcissistic parents don't respect boundaries, privacy, when kids are growing up in their household. So, you know, you may have been barged in on in the bathroom or when you were dressing in your room if you tried to say you didn't want to talk about something or had a diary you may find out later that your diary had been busted open by maybe an offhand comment where you would know oh man they see you as their property or an extension of themselves, so they don't see that there's any need for boundaries. As a result, you may have a very hard time setting boundaries, or if you've learned how to set them, you may be extremely rigid on them and are not letting the people pass them that possibly could be good for you in your life. You can see why, though. Jealousy. Yep. The narcissist needs the attention to be on them. They don't want anyone else to have it. And so while they may have thought they wanted children, when the child appears and the child starts getting the attention from the spouse or the relatives or whatever, they're not happy campers. They don't want to share the spotlight. They're supposed to have the attention. So your parent might actually compete with you to win your friends over. They may pick up the same hobbies. They 
don't want you to be the focus of attention unless they could somehow benefit from it or be seen as an extension of it so it is theirs. Which means they will often take credit for their kids' accomplishments. You know, if you do big things, you're going to be plastered all over their social media. And they're going to make sure everyone knows that they are your mother or your father. They get off on your success. And they're not going to be shy about making the connection known. They're going to take credit. They may think that they have a right to tell you what your career should be, what college you should go to, what you should be doing for a living or not doing, who you should be hanging out with, who you shouldn't be hanging out with. They see you as an extension once again, and so they have the right to choose. You don't have any say in this. So they may actually be very intrusive in your life and be very vocal with their opinions about, you know, no, you shouldn't do this, even though you love it. You should do this because this is a very important career. Or no, you shouldn't be with that person. That's not going to work. I think you should be with this person. They don't hesitate to exert their will on you. Here's maybe the most disturbing thing. It's hard for a child to understand, most certainly, and it's probably hard to accept. So this one, you might be shaking your head and go, no, no way, that couldn't be. But narcissistic parents like to inflict pain because they get strong reactions and emotions out of you, and that's really yummy food for their ego. If you go to them and you seek comfort because something has really hurt you or disturbed you, you're likely to get a buck up, you know, man up, don't act like a baby, grow up, whatever, from them. They're not going to comfort you, most likely. Or if they do, there will be some little dig that really kind of takes away any comfort that you might have thought was there because there's that put down. Now this one is what made me realize that here I'd been thinking my sister had come out unscathed from my mom's narcissistic attacks, I guess you could say. These parents will often infantilize their kids to keep them dependent. So they're going to make you think that you can't do anything right. You're not good enough. Why would you even try to have that relationship or to achieve that goal? Um, you need them after all. They try to keep their kids dependent on them. And so this tipped me off because, you know, my sister spent only a few years away from my parents. Even when she was an adult and she had children of her own, she lived with them. She was supported by them. It never dawned on me that that might be because that's the way my mom had worked on her, made her feel that she wasn't going to be able to accomplish anything anyway. She might as well stay home. And I'm sure there were plenty of guilt trips about all that my parents were doing for her. So, you know, it just, I feel guilty, honestly, that I couldn't see this. But of course I couldn't. I couldn't see any of this as to myself either until long after she died. Let me see. I probably didn't phrase that. Let me see. To keep kids under their control... They'll put you down to make you think that no one could ever love you as much as they can. They'll keep you under their thumb and make you feel like the world is against you because then they will be your only safe haven, of course. They're not a haven at all. They're not safe. 
but they will make you think that really they're your only option, that you shouldn't venture out and be an independent adult or, or trust other people because only they can be there for you in that special way. They will not apologize. If something went wrong, it's always going to be someone else's fault, whether that's yours or, you know, someone else's. They're pretty much always going to be in victim mode then. So if you do confront them, they're going to turn it on you and say it was all because you did, yada, 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 or they're going to totally deny what they did and say you got that wrong. They are very good at gaslighting their children. So as it was with my mother, I would get instructions to do something this way. Okay, you do this, this, this. And when I would come back thinking, oh, I would be praised for having followed the instructions, it would be, no, you screwed that up. The second step, you were supposed to blah, 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 blah. Well, as kids, we don't realize that they just switched everything on us. We take it on as us having misunderstood. And this is why we're always doubting ourselves. We're always second guessing ourselves because the rules got changed in the middle of the game, but they never admitted they were doing that. You know, and the confusion or the upset we would show after that would again be yummy food for their ego. You know, I'm doing that, I guess, because of Pac-Man. I can't explain <laughs> Some of my choices, what can I say? I've just seen that little Pac-Man thing go. Okay. Here's another thing that made me feel bad about, you know, losing the chance to ever fix things with my sister. Because how it would work is, no matter what my sister's behavior, she always was the favorite. So I suppose I was jealous. I was always working even harder trying to get some of that favor bestowed upon me. I didn't realize that narcissistic parents do this. They will compare you to your siblings or your friends, other people, and make sure you know you're lacking. You don't measure up. Oh, your sister or your brother was so much better at this than you are. Uh, they will basically pit you against your siblings or your friends because that certainly stirs up some strong emotions, right? And I never realized, you know, that this was going on with my sister. So if I did accomplish something, which is how I earned attention, I would do well at things. Probably she was going to my sister and making my sister feel like a failure. She probably was bragging on me, never to my face, but to make my sister feel bad. And it's like with cards, you know, so say it was their anniversary. I would go to their house. I would give my mom the anniversary card. She would look at it and say, oh, that's nice. And then reach over and say, oh, look at this beautiful card your sister gave us. I never realized that she was trying to create this dynamic of jealousy. You know, she was trying to insert that wedge and yet... She kept trying to shove us together. So like when I got married, she insisted that my sister be my maid of honor, even though we didn't have any kind of decent relationship. And I was my sister's, where she probably would have much rather had one of her other friends. So, you know, here we were set up with this dynamic to, you know, not even like each other because... You know, the other one was getting the attention for this, and then this other one was getting the attention for this, and we were made to feel like pieces of crap because we didn't measure up to them, and yet we were forced to 
act as if we had this relationship that never could have existed. See, that's the thing that really bothers me. I feel kind of robbed, actually. You know? I just didn't realize what my sister might have been going through. It was very similar to what I was, just coming from a different angle. And, you know, she's gone. I can't do anything about it now. Um, let's see what I missed here. Uh, they will compare you to siblings or friends, finding you lacking, and then portraying themselves as victims because the other friend or sibling wouldn't have been as disappointing as you are. They will make you feel like they lost out to have you, kind of like you're the consolation prize. And no matter how much you try, it's never going to be enough. It never will be enough. And if nothing else comes through to you from this video, I hope you will realize you could kill yourself and it still wouldn't be enough. All right, the last point. Narcissists love drama. Now, just from my own experience, I can remember when I was younger, my mom telling a story, and she was quite the storyteller, very entertaining. Everyone loved to listen to her. The problem was, it wasn't always the truth. And as a kid, I didn't understand, because, you know, you're taught to not tell lies. And I'd be listening and know something to not be the case, especially if it was about me. She would embellish to make the story better. As I got older, I would call her on it sometimes. I'd be like, Mom, that's not how it happened. And be poo-pooed. You know, so narcissists can be quite entertaining. That's drama. That's attention. But that also explains pitting the siblings against each other because... You know, you're playing out this scenario that the parent has likely very carefully orchestrated. If you are fighting with each other, mmm, drama. Nummy, 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 nummy. <laughs> now I'm just going to keep doing that and it's going to get irritating. I'll try not to do that too many more times, but I'm not promising so remember, any strong emotional response feeds the narcissistic supply need, whether positive or negative. Basically, we are used for supply, you know, supply and demand. We just don't realize that often we're being manipulated to give their egos what their egos need. It's at the expense of our own self-esteem. And we grow up not realizing why we can't believe it when people tell us we're wonderful. We don't know why all these other people could say we're fantastic and yet the parent can only find fault. Well, you know, it's not your fault. If you've been raised by a narcissistic parent, basically you've been systematically knocked down anytime you've tried to see yourself as worthy or valuable. If you don't see the worth in yourself and these things are resonating with you, forgive yourself for buying into their bullshit and realize you don't have to buy into it anymore. You've been worked on hard. It seems so sick. It really does. And I guess maybe that's the key. They are sick. You know, they weren't born this way. 
some kind of trauma in their lives caused them to be this way. It's just what it is. It may not be fair, but it is what it is. It doesn't mean you have to quit loving them. But it does mean you have to start loving yourself more. Because you didn't get the love from them that you thought should be coming your way. And you turned it on yourself. Not by accident. Because that's how it was designed to be. So... I am almost done, but I did run upon another video by a lady called Lisa A. Romano. And she was talking about phrases you can use to shut down a narcissist and get them to leave you alone because they are very persistent. And I'm hoping that you'll be able to see that, you know, you've kind of been a pawn on the chessboard and will be able to break out of these things. I know, you know, these are things that can be discussed in therapy. But just being aware, this is my way of looking at it. Just becoming aware is a good step forward. Because the next time something happens... You might think back to, oh, yeah, that lady said. You might see how you're being manipulated. And I wanted to include these phrases, I guess, or retorts that might disarm the person that's coming at you, the narcissist that's coming at you. And she did make it a point to say these are nonviolent narcissists, whole of the story, apparently if they're violent, and I hope you're not with anyone like that. All right. So basically, you have to remember that any kind of conflict or fighting back is feeding their ego. So your goal here is no matter how much they infuriate you, you don't want to react because they will get off on that. And the more that you interact with them, the more you're feeding their ego. So... You can say, if that's how you feel, I can live with it. You're done. You don't engage further. They'll be like, wait, I just said something insulting. Why aren't they fighting with me? No, if that's how you feel, I can live with it. Another was, I'm sorry you feel that way. Same thing, though. You deliver that, and then you're done interacting. Your anger is not my responsibility. Now, I would think that might be a bit inflammatory, but this was on the list. Here's one. You have the right to feel how you feel. You have the right. What are they going to say to that? No, I don't. I don't want to argue about this anymore. And I added, let's just agree to disagree. Whoa, you're really going to thwart the desire to argue on that one. Let's just agree to disagree. Probably really irritating, but you've shut down any chance of them getting off on arguing with you. And let's see, this one is so messy, I'm not sure I can read it. I, I can see why you would feel that way considering how you are viewing it. You're giving them permission to feel what they feel, whether it be anger, disappointment, you know, whatever they're trying to lay on you as a guilt trip, whatever. You're just diffusing it. You're refusing to engage with them. You're not feeding their ego. That shuts them down and you get some peace. You get to walk away. Not to say that what they've said to you wasn't hurtful or untrue, but you don't want to feed their ego and you have to realize now where they're coming from. May not even be true. They're just trying to provoke you. They're just looking for that drama, those strong emotional reactions. 
it may be really challenging to walk away. You may feel like an injustice has occurred, and that's a hard one for me to walk away from injustice, but for your own peace of mind. And maybe to eventually get them to quit picking at you so much. You know, eventually they're going to realize you're breaking free of their hold. And they'll probably go find another victim. And I'm not telling you to be in victim mode. Hell no. I'm telling you this stuff. Repeating it, regurgitating it, however you want to look at it. So that you can realize you aren't just messed up by accident you aren't messed up because there's something wrong with you you are messed up i guess if you want to look at it that way because there was a very concentrated effort to make you so that empowers you that totally should empower you so as you start to feel a little more confident, realizing it was all bullshit that was put on you, hopefully you will be allowing less and less of it because you're going to set boundaries and you're going to insist that they be respected now, right? So I think that was it on the disarming statements and the last thing I just wanted to end with was uh, I think from the Psych Central article kind of the winding up paragraph but put in my own way and I think I'm going to put my glasses on for this as I was getting more and more tired my writing deteriorated all right Your conditioning fed you with lies about yourself, made you feel unworthy and ashamed. You may not have experienced joy or happiness as a child, but you can choose now to see the lies for what they were, lies. And they were coming from a person acting from their own core wounds. You know, it doesn't hurt to insert some compassion into this. You may be pissed off when you hear all this. But, I mean, you have to remember, you know, we've done some stupid things and mean things and things that didn't make sense because of how we were wounded. This person also had wounds and did stupid things. You know, maybe on a much larger scale. But it all kind of boils down to those core wounds. Allow everything good in your life, knowing that you deserve it. And see, that's going to take a lot of work. When you've been telling yourself for years and years you don't deserve anything good. And you've been sabotaging it every time you have a chance at it. It's going to be like breaking a very bad habit. It's going to take work. You're probably going to backslide. I know I will. I'm working on all this right along with you. I guess that's what I want you to know. Some of these were real eye-openers to me. You know, and yes, I have seen myself as defective and unworthy for much of my life. Only recently starting to realize why I was feeling that way and that I could reject that way of thinking now. But it does take a lot of work and it, there is always backsliding and we have to forgive ourselves because we're human. You know, if you were trying to quit smoking and you messed up and had a cigarette and got right back into the habit, you know, you could say, oh, well, I guess I blew it. I'll just keep smoking then. Or you could say, eh, you know, I'm human. I slipped, but I must start again tomorrow. Just keep working at it because, you know, you are worthy. You are valuable. You are amazing. And you are so worthy of having everything good in your life. You do deserve that, so allow it. And it may be scary to venture out of that box, your comfort zone, where you're used to telling yourself you can't have any of that, that your needs aren't valid. But remember, those were lies. 
and you don't have to buy into them anymore. Okay, guys, I hope that helped. I'm sending you my love. And I hope you take care of yourselves. This may be a little bit hard to process. It's a lot. And, of course, listening to me for 35 freaking minutes, you know, you're probably exhausted. Go do something nice for yourself right now, okay? Bye. Take care.